So, it's smaller than half a football field, just a fifth of a Manhattan city block, and well over 100 people living there. From a distance, Magingo Island looks like a desolate rocky chunk on Lake Victoria. But zoom in closer, a little more, and you'll see that gray color isn't rocks, it's rooftops. 131 people live on this one-half-acre piece of land. Doesn't sound like much of a crowd. After all, they'd fit into one modestly-sized movie theater auditorium. But the compactness more than doubles the most densely populated city in the world, Mumbai, India. Most of the island is covered with rocks. There's barely any vegetation growing there, save for a tiny patch of green grass with a couple small trees growing on it. But no need for gardening. This island is all about fish. Locals make a fortune on catching and selling Nile perch. When you get paid by the pound, a massive fish species that can grow 6 feet long and weigh upwards of 250 pounds equals a gold mine. People here make three times what they would on the mainland. With money to spend, businesses quickly popped up on the island as well. Stores sell everything from food to any fishing supplies you might need. But most of the inhabitants' earnings goes toward the limited entertainment they have. Cafes, dice, pools, hotels… There might not be a hospital or a school, but there is a hair salon and two tailor shops. Most of the buildings are made from steel sheets, especially on the high street. There are also some makeshift huts in the alleyways. There's only one sturdy brick building. It houses the boat engines. One of the most serious problems are the heavy rains that happen pretty much every night. It's not good for the poorly equipped boats. Some 20 years ago, the island was almost entirely uninhabited. But by the 2010s, the population had reached a critical 130 people for its tiny territory. There's literally no room to build any more houses. Still, there are no official records. So some sources even claim to have counted about 500 people living there in 2009. Magingo may be the most densely populated, but it's not the smallest inhabited island on the planet. You see, not all tiny spots of land poking out of the water are given official island status. The definition for that was set back in 1851. To be considered an island, it should either be inhabited or have enough grass for at least one sheep to graze. That's about two acres. Bishop Rock, a part of the Isles of Scilly southwest of England, may not have any grass for a sheep to feed on, but it can fit some people in its 880 square yards. That's a little bigger than a basketball court. Almost two centuries ago, in 1847, they decided to build a lighthouse on the Lonesome Rock. The whole construction process was tricky. The workers could barely find space to step on. The completed tower was made of steel, but never shined that first light. It got washed away in 1850. The second try was more successful. They built this one from stone, and it lit up successfully in 1858, over a decade after the idea was first brought forth. That structure still stands today, though it's had plenty of renovations over the years. Luckily, they never had to build one out of sticks. Then it would have been called the Three Little Pigs Lighthouse. Nah, not really. The first floor holds a freshwater tank for the lighthouse workers. Then you go up to the entrance room with a metal door that takes the full force of the Atlantic on a regular basis. Climb further to the third floor, and you see a storage room. The next two levels are oil rooms, a must-have to keep the lamp on top of the structure lit. The sixth floor has a living room, bedrooms on the seventh floor, next another storage room, then a service room on the ninth. And finally, the 10th floor is where you'll find the main lamp. Any lighthouse needs a keeper, so they moved into the place in 1858. That meant that Bishop Rock was no longer uninhabited. Just like that, it became Britain's smallest island. It still holds a Guinness record as the world's smallest island with a building on it. Now, imagine you're the keeper. How would you spend your free time? Because here's what you can't do on the island. One, play football, tennis, soccer, or anything else that requires a ball. It'll end up in the sea in no time. But hey, you already have a keeper! 2. Go for a morning run or walk. Your only cardio will probably be going up and down the stairs. 3. Invite some friends over. Hey, you can barely step on the island by yourself. Well, no need to convince anyone to take the job. Today, the island is back to uninhabited status. The lighthouse has been automated since 1992. 
For real introverts, there are a thousand islands you can choose to build your house on. Seriously, I'm talking about the Thousand Islands region on the upper St. Lawrence River. If the name rings a bell, ding, yes, this is where the salad dressing originates. They say only four people who live there know the real recipe, and the stuff you buy at the store isn't legit Thousand Island dressing. It's only 999 island dressing, or something. Anyway, one of the islets in the archipelago is called Just Room Enough. <laughs> the name speaks for itself. There's just enough room for one house and one tree. Also known as Hub Island, it's the tiniest inhabited one not only in the archipelago, but in the whole world. There's actually a local convention regulating if a sandy dot can be counted as part of the Thousand Islands group. The criteria are pretty simple. One, the island, no matter what its size, should be above river level all year round. And two, the island must be able to sustain two trees or shrubs. Now, back in the 50s, a family bought Hub Island, built a small house there, and planted a tree. If their plan was to have a secret getaway property, well, that's not what ended up happening. Their cottage became quite popular for tourists cruising the river. With only 370 square yards, it's less than half the size of Bishop Rock Island when the tide is low. One wrong step, and you're in the river. If you'd like to follow in that family's footsteps, mm, bad news. Building on islets smaller than 2 acres was recently banned. The problem with these itsy-bitsy dwellings is that there's not enough room for plumbing systems. As for one of the most remote islands out there, that would be Suwaro Atoll in the Cook Islands. People do live on this ring-shaped piece of land in the South Pacific, but it's only accessible by a private boat. The island itself is a national park, so the two people who inhabit it are seasonal staff, not permanent residents. The population was bigger a few years ago because previous island keepers brought their families with them. Every five years, they advertise the position of a Swaro Island Natural Reserve caretaker. You arrive on a barge, together with six months' worth of supplies like canned goods and water. The national park has someone accompany the new keepers for the first day to help them clean the island. Then you're left all on your own. One memorable island inhabitant was a guy named Tom Neal. He was a sailor who first docked at Suaro in 1945. Even back then, he dreamed of living a solitary life on a tropical island, and this looked like just the right spot. He didn't get permission to move there until seven years later in 1952. That's when he became a 20th century Robinson Crusoe. Neil ended up staying there on and off for over 15 years until 1977. I think it was a Friday. <laughs>